let you in on a little bit of secret of television making. Sometimes here at The Late Show, we get a guest who tells such great stories we can't fit it all into one show. Well, James Taylor was here on Monday, and we weren't able to air all of it, so we have a special treat for you tonight. More Sweet Baby James. When did your first album, James Taylor, come out? That came out in, in, uh, in this country in 69, in England in, in, in late 68. And when was Sweet Baby James? Sweet Baby James was 1971. What was it like to be breaking onto the scene at that period of time? Uh, you know, it was to be in London in 1968 mm -hmm. and to be signed to and recording with uh, the Beatles, seeing them every day in the it's, studio. Well, th this is the, the, the part that people may not know, is that you were the first non-English act or non-British act to be non -Beatles. signed. Non-Beatles. Non -Beatles. First non-Beatles. First act. First act, other yeah. than the Beatles, signed to Apple. Yeah. How did that come about? Uh, you know, it was just good luck. But of course, it followed a, a number of years of bad luck, so, but... <laughs> I guess that's how that works. Yeah. I was introduced to uh, Peter Asher, who, uh, of course, had been part of the British invasion of... Peter and Gordon. Peter and Gordon, yeah. Yeah. Peter really, he's the one who gave me my big break. And so. what was he at Apple? He had just signed on as head of A&R, which is essentially a uh, talent scout. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he was looking for people to sign. It, it couldn't have been better, better timed. And uh, I went over to visit Peter, and um, I played him my little demo. It was on a reel-to-reel -reel, uh, yeah. tape, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and he liked it, and I, uh, he gave me a guitar, and I played a few other things. And, uh, ultimately, he said, yeah, this sounds good. Let's go to Apple and see if we can interest uh, a Beatle in it. So that's what we did. We went over there. And, and the way Peter recalls it, uh, I, I have very little memory of the day because I'm, I'm nervous now. But at that point, I was like uh, vibrating at about 440 uh, hertz. An A. An yes, a. an A. I, I, was, I, was really, I was really nervous, and I, and I barely remember it. I, I felt as though I, I was underwater for the entire day. So who was there when you get there? Did, were there any Beatles available? Did there they were. get one of them out of their crate? The way Peter remembers it, <laughs> yes, that's right. They, they busted a seal on a, on a can of, be, of Beatles. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, no, uh, Paul McCartney and George Harrison were there. And... Uh, um, the way Peter remembers it is that he just, we went into a, a, a room at, uh, in, in Baker, Baker Street, which is where the Apple offices were at that point. And uh, uh, he just, Peter leaned out of the door into the hallway and said, uh, is there a beetle in the house? <laughs> and and it, it turned out there, there were two beetles. <laughs> sure, that's enough. But Peter said, listen, that, I've got this guy here. I'd like to sign him to the label, but but so let's take a listen. And I I played uh, something in the way she moves to uh, George and Paul, and I I don't actually remember the the anything about it. I mean, have you heard to Paul? Does Paul remember the moment? Uh, yeah, Paul does remember it uh, vaguely, you know, because um, you know it was. They had a lot going on. Yeah, they had a lot going on. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. They were recording the White Album at the time. They were, too. Did yeah. you really record your first album with them? Which was, was that Sweet Baby James? Or was that uh, no, James Taylor? that was James Taylor. James Taylor. Yeah. James Taylor. Did you do that while they were recording White Album at the same time? Yes, I did. They, the, it, it turned out that, you know, they usually recorded at Abbey Road. But Abbey Road didn't have an eight-track machine. And uh, there was only one eight-track machine in Britain at the time. And that was uh, at a studio called Trident, which was in Leicester Square. So uh, the, the Beatles just booked it solid for a couple of months, and uh, we took the time they weren't using. Wow. Did you watch the recording of the White Album? Oh, yeah. Have you ever covered any of the songs from the White Album? Because you would kill on Rocky Raccoon. <laughs> Rocky Raccoon is right in your wheelhouse, brother. I, I heard the first playback of Rocky Raccoon. Yeah? Yeah, at the end of that session day. Wow. It's great. Did they ask your opinion of any of the music? What did you think about that, James? 
<laughs> no. no. Did you hear anything and you went, I don't get revolution number nine. I don't understand this at all. Or like, you know, why don't we do it in the road? You could vary up the lyrics a little bit or something like yeah. that. No, I, 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 I didn't really get revolution number nine either, but... I'm still waiting. Backwards, it makes all the sense in the world. Yes, that's right. um, hey, let me ask you a question. Did you really write uh, um, uh, Close Your Eyes for Joni Mitchell while she was asleep in the backseat of a car that you were driving on the Pacific Coast Highway? No. <laughs> but... But, no, but, no, no, no. But it's, no, no, it's no. close. Maybe that's the end of the story. Okay. No, no, go ahead. What? What's well, close? Well, it's close, yeah. I, um, Joni, uh, I, I was making a movie, the only movie of my life, uh, uh, called Tulane Blacktop. And sure. I, and I, I, uh, Joni was traveling with me at the time just, just for company, and she was knitting me a, a, a sweater, a Tulane Blacktop sweater. One of the arms was like this long and the other was here. It was, but it was really, it was a beautiful thing, and I, 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 I wish I knew where it was, but I. Uh, but uh, so uh, Joni was traveling with me. We were staying in a, in a hotel, a motel outside of Santa Fe, and uh, um, she was asleep in, in, the, in the bed, and I was sitting on the side playing the guitar, uh, and I wrote that song, yeah. Wow. And, and, and you, you played it for her when she woke up? Yeah, and she, uh, you know, she, she seemed to like it. it... <laughs> It's an okay song. It's an okay song. It is nice. Yeah. If you ever want to write me a song, I'll be out. <laughs> We've got a new album uh, coming out. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, American Standard. You'll be back here uh, next month. Do us some songs. <laughs> Matt. What, what makes the cut for James Taylor as an American Standard? Mostly show tunes. Um... Uh, the great Rodgers and Hammerstein shows, uh, Oklahoma, South Pacific, Carousel, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kiss Me Kate by Cole Porter, um, you know, Porgy and Bess, uh, all of those great, uh, those great shows of the, the 40s and 50s. And, and actually, my, my mom used to take us up to expose us to culture in, in New York a little bit, and uh, we'd get on the train and come up here in, in little groups of two or three, and uh, she'd, she'd take us to uh, a museum or, or to a, uh, a Broadway play, you know. So, but um, uh, how did we get there? Oh, yeah. So the family coll uh, record collection was a lot of these songs, and I learned to play them on the guitar. Mm -hmm. And those songs that I've had arrangements of on the guitar for, lo, these many years, uh, they're the ones that went into this album. So it, it's basically a guitar um, a work on guitar. I, uh, there's no piano. There's uh, there are no strings. It's basically uh, two guitars and uh, vocals. James's new album, American Standard, is available on February 28th. We'll be